I think the sugar levels in most foods, um, uh, most processed foods, have changed dramatically. If you think, think about sugar in food, it's carbohydrate. The carbohydrates come from two major sources. They're either unrefined, in which they're things that grow in the ground or grow on trees or uh, you know, grow on shrubs and so forth, and that we eat, or they're things that we have made. When we make uh, when we make foods, when we process food, what we're basically doing is changing the structure of the sugars that we're, we're, that we're going to consume. And what we're doing is we're pr primarily removing the plant cell wall. Um, and that affects the rate of absorption of the sugars that we consume. So if you think about these two different groups, if you've got unrefined carbohydrates, these are all the vegetables that you might consume, or the fruits, uh, and the berries, all of these sorts of things. These are, they fall into four groups, uh, fibrous carbohydrates, Typical vegetables that grow above the ground, salad vegetables, the onion family, the starch carbohydrates, which are roots and grains, um, uh, the mixed carbohydrates, which are beans and pulses, and fruits. And all of those are what I would call normal carbohydrates, unrefined carbohydrates. The refined carbohydrates, though, are where man has done something to, the pro to it in terms of and processed it. And the most refined carbohydrate would obviously be table sugar. And that's sucrose, which has been stripped out of. The, um, the, the whole plant and crystallize. There's a very big difference in between the way these molecules, uh, uh, th these sugars, get utilized by the body. Sugar is sugar, glucose is glucose wherever it occurs, but the problem is when it occurs in a refined source, it gets absorbed very quickly. When it gets absorbed very quickly, it has a high, supposed high glycemic index. It um, causes your body to make much more insulin than it would have made if the same number of calories had come from an unrefined source. The consequence of, the, of that is that it causes your blood glucose to go up very quickly and come down very quickly. When it's coming down very quickly, it's, um, it's, it's causing you to feel poor. So when it's going up very quickly, you have great concentration, you feel very good. When it's coming down, um, uh, after, after this large amount of insulin has been excreted, then you, what you find is that your concentration goes, um, you, can have a, you can have poor mood, you can find yourself being irritable. But when that blood glucose is coming down, you have to ask, ask yourself, where is all that glucose going? First of all, there's little glucose in the blood, and you decide to eat a refined carbohydrate, and your blood glucose rises. When it's rising, you're feeling very good, but then about 40 minutes later, it's coming down. As it comes down, and you're feeling not so good, um, all that blood glucose is getting stored away into one of two places. In humans, it gets stored either as muscle and liver glycogen, if you've just done some exercise, but at any other time, if you haven't done any exercise, you've been sat in the office all day, and you're just having a cup of tea and a, a couple of chocolate biscuits, then it's going to get stored as body fat. So you may consume no fat or little fat in your diet, but cause your body to become a fat-making machine. So, so there is a very big difference in the, in the types of carbohydrates one can choose to consume. And that's when we talk about primarily glucose. But there is another sugar that's, that's added greatly into our diets these days, particularly into processed foods, and those come from high fructose corn syrups. Corn syrup is a long chain of glucose molecules, and there was a, a guy in Japan who worked out how to enzymically convert some of those glucose molecules into fructose, and hence high fructose corn syrup. The, the advantage of high fructose corn syrup is corn is a very stable commodity. You can make large amounts of it cheaper than you can make sugar, and it's sweeter than sugar. So now you can add a sweeter product to your processing uh, process that you can control the price of more easily than you, we could control the price of cane sugar, which varied depending on the harvest. So it's, high fructose corn syrup is ubiquitous in all foods now. Um, and one of the problems with that is that fructose isn't used by any cell in your body. So when you eat fructose, it gets converted into body fat. So you eat, you eat fructose and all gets converted into body fat. So, and the other thing about fructose is that fructose doesn't your body doesn't, society mechanisms don't recognise fructose in the same way as it does glucose. So you can drink two litres of your favourite fizzy drink, loads of sugar in there, but loads of calories in there, but your body doesn't really recognise it. So afterwards you still feel hungry. So people are not only turning themselves into fat-making machines, they're also drinking sugars which are causing their bodies to make fat and stopping their bodies from burning fat. There's a big problem with, um, with processed food and the sugars that are added to it. If you want to control your blood glucose, it's best to eat unprocessed foods, so whole grains, um, whole vegetables and so forth, um, and do that ideally in the basis of a mixed meal, which is having some carbohydrate with some protein, because the protein will slow down the rate of absorption of sugar further, um, as well as satiating you more than sugar will do. 